The covenant of marriage. The seventh commandment presupposes that marriage is a covenant between one man and one woman. The, co- the word covenant is, a sol- covenant is a solemn oath or binding commitment between two parties involving mutual obligations, the promise of blessings and threat of curses. This I, I get, I'm reading from uh, my lecture from social ethics by Dr. James Anderson's um, class. It's really good. Uh, scripture presents marriage as a covenant. For, exa- for example, Genesis 1, 27, 28 says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over everything that moves on the earth. Okay. Then the man said, This at last is my bone, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Now, last line is the most important line. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. Hold fast is covenant, covenant language. Okay, it implies closeness and loyalty. Malachi 2.16, for the man who does not love his wife but divorces her, says the Lord, the God of Israel, covers his garment with violence, says the Lord of hosts. So guard yourself in your spirit and do not be faithless. Wow. God equates divorce as violence. Very, very painful and hurtful. So God says, hold fast. You know why? Because it's so, it, it's, it's, a, it's a covenant, it's the one flesh implies sexual unity and intimacy. So it is so united, it's so intimate. So that's why it is it's a covenant. Um, scripture directly describes marriage as a covenant. For instance, Ezra 10 verse 8, If that anyone who did not come within three days by orders or officials shall be forfeited, shall be banned from the covenant of the exiles. Um, now, this is a good one. Malachi 2 verse 14. But you say, why does he not? Because the Lord was a witness between you and the wife of your youth. To whom you have been faithless, though she is your companion and your wife by covenant. God looks, God watches over us. So in Malachi, God rebuked uh, Israel. Um, you know, the witness between, between Israel and the wife of your youth. And you have not been faithful to, to her. Uh, even though she's your companion and your wife by covenant. You see, God used, actually used the word covenant for marriage. So scripture analog, analogous mar, uh, analogizes marriage to be covenant between God and man. Such a covenant is characterized by an oath. Before God, it is appropriate that a marriage to be solemnized by a public ceremony because it is a covenant. Therefore, marriage should be solemnized in the presence of the church. And because it's a covenant, it's a covenant between the man and the woman, the husband and the wife, and also between the covenant between them and God. Romans 7 verse 2 to 3 says, For a married man is bound by law to a husband while he lives. But if a husband dies, she's released from the law of marriage. Accordingly, she will be called an adulteress if she lives with another man while her husband is alive. But if her husband dies, she's freed from that law. And, and if she marries another man, she's not an adulteress. You see that the, the lifelong bounding, binding by, <clears throat> by the covenant between a man and woman in the context of marriage. 1 Corinthians 7.39 says, A wife is bound to her husband as long as he lives. But if her husband dies, she is free to be married to anyone to whom he wish, she wishes only in the Lord. Okay, so marriage serves multiple purposes. It reflects the unity and diversity of humanity in the image of God. Wow. If marriage serves the sexual complementarity, the okay, sexual complementarian, complementarity, complements one another, a man and a woman. Marriage constitutes a basic unit of human society. So true that today's world, if families fall apart, society falls apart. 
Okay, marriage. Serves the parent-child relationship. Marriage provides ideal context for mutual support and sexual fulfillment between a man and a woman, between husband and wife. History confirms that secular psychologists and philosophers also support that. So it provides a stable environment for raising of godly children. So you know, marriage is a stable environment for the raising of godly children. It models the relationship between Christ. And the church.